Hi everyone, Gemma here, thanks for watching today. In today's video we're going to be making a hexagon clutch box which is the perfect size to hold some treats or a small gift. This has been designed by Simply Made Crafts and it's a really quick and simple die to use and put together. So I've got this embossing folder. I'm really sorry, but I, I'm not sure where it is from. This was uh, before I started labeling everything, but um, any embossing folder will do. It's just to add a bit of texture, more interest to the project. And as I said, I'm using the hexagon clutch box die set from Simply Made Crafts. So everything is included within this set. So I'm using the flowers and the foliage and it all comes together really lovely. So these are all the pieces that I've cut. So if I just bring the die back in, so I've got the, I'll take that out of the sleeve so you can see it better. So I've got the largest die here and I've cut that twice. I've then taken these dies here, so the largest in white, this die here, largest in white. And then the next size down then in the same colour cardstock and I've embossed those. I've used this die here and this die here to cut in glitter cardstock so it looks like um, the hardware. I've then used the flowers and the leaves and I've cut some in glitter cardstock, white cardstock and then the flowers in blue and yellow. I've then cut this die twice and this will form the handle. And you will need to use this die here to cut into the back piece of the cardstock in the top here. And that will form the slots then for the handle. So I'll go through everything with you now. So we'll start with our two largest pieces. So the first step that I took was to reinforce the score lines. Um, I'm sure you've heard me say this before, we've all got different machines, different pressures, um, and I'm using quite a heavyweight cardstock here, I'm using the little cardstock. It doesn't normally crack, but I do reinforce the score lines with my scoreboard, and that's perhaps why there isn't any cracking. So I just line everything up and then just follow the score line and score it through. So you are going to need to do some cutting on one of the pieces. So this piece here, I didn't reinforce this score line or this score line because we're going to trim this piece away. So you can use the scissors if you wish. I'm just going to make sure I've got a complete straight edge so I'm just lining it up with the line that's there and just trimming that away. So the next thing that I want to do is to cut the slots in the lid piece here that will house the handle. So I'm just going to centre that as best as possible and just tack that in place and run that through my die cutter machine. So that's now complete. The next thing that we're going to do is fold and burnish along the score lines. So I folded and burnished all the score lines. They're all mountain folds except for this score line here which is a valley. And you just want to pinch that slightly. So I'm going to remove this end tab here and it's from the same piece that we removed the lid. So again you can use a pair of scissors if you wish. I've just used a knife and a ruler. And now we're going to look at attaching everything together. So this forms the back piece like so. And then this forms the front piece and it all attached together. 
so you could use red tape for this if you wish I'm just going to use some quick grab glue so I've got the side panel piece here and I've added glue along this tab and then I'm going to attach this piece onto there like so I'm going to flip it over and do the opposite tab to attach these pieces together so because it's not a square shape you can't sort of fold it over you have to hold it in its 3d form like so so now that that's had time to grab we're going to work on the base so the first thing I'm going to do is work on the back piece which has the lid there and I'm going to attach some glue on this tab here and then I'm just going to square that off with this piece here then I'm going to do the same on the opposite side and then we'll close everything up so I'm adding glue along these two tabs and also on this inner tab here I'm not sure if you can quite see that and then I'm tucking that underneath and marrying everything up so you can pop your hand inside just to add some pressure and help those tabs grab Perhaps I should have closed this up last actually because it's quite difficult now to get in with the glue. It should be fine. But it might make it easier for you. To close everything up. So on this panel here I'm just going to add some Kalal glue to just strengthen the base so it holds anything that we have inside. And then I'm just going to tuck that in. So that's everything now attached. We've got a nice clean gift box there. So where we pinched these score lines, we can now put some more pressure on those and get those folded. And the lid will fold, fold over like so. Next, I'm going to attach my handles together. I'm just going to bring my scoreboard in and score at half an inch on both sides. So I'm just going to valley fold those score lines and add a curve into the cardstock. So I want it to dry in that shape. like so so I'm just going to let that dry and I'll attach it to the gift bag shortly next I'm going to work on my mats and layers so I'm going to attach them together while I have a flat surface and now I'm going to attach it to the bag so there we have our mats and layers now attached and I'm just going to slot the handle in now and then from the inside just add some quick grab glue to the tabs here and then just hold that in place like so and then do the exact same thing on the opposite side so there's the hexagon clutch bag all assembled isn't it cute I really like it I think it's so sweet and it's a great size you've got about five inches by four inches so this could hold a piece of jewelry some other small gifts a gift card and some sweets or just some treats just a little something to say thank you or I'm thinking about you so we're going to finish off the decoration now and close the bag up with 
some hook and loops. So I've brought in my hot glue gun and my hook and loops. So these are 10 millimeters. And I don't find this stick very good on these. It doesn't seem to last. So I like to put a little bit of hot glue to hold that in place and I'm just going to put one on each side so I'm just going to hold that in place now until the glue dries I'm just doing the same on the opposite side and then I'm just going to go in with my hot glue again and just pop a bit on both pieces make sure everything lines up and then just press that down to hold that in place so that's all sealed up now and I'm going to bring in my flowers and leaves and the hardware so we've got this piece here and we're just going to add a little curl into it like so and then that slots through there like so I don't know if you can see that and then you attach these two sort of tabs to the back piece of this so I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue because it's glitter And then I'm just going to attach this using some quick grab glue. Pop that on the front there. And now I'm just going to add the final decoration with the flowers here. So there's all the flowers and leaves added. It looks so pretty <laughs> and I'm just going to finish it off now with some Nouveau Dream Drops and I have the Indigo Eclipse and the Lemon Twist. So I've just popped a stamping block underneath to level out that surface. So if it doesn't have a flat surface to dry it will um, form at the wrong angle. So that's the final result. I really like this colour palette together. I'm trying to expand on the colour combinations that I use. My go-to colours are always pink, orange and yellow. Um, but hopefully you can see more colour variation in the projects that I'm sharing with you. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, you might want to hit the like button, leave a comment or consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. Any products used in today's video will be listed in the description box below. You can find that information by clicking on the more button or the drop down arrow and that will give you the full list of information. Some of the links provided are affiliated links. If you use those links, they don't cost you any extra but they provide me with a small percentage of commission and it helps support my channel. Once again, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.